Hi, I'm Jim W6LG, your YouTube owner for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room here in Rockland, California. Today we're going to talk about velocity factor and what the heck is that about and why does it matter and where would you use it? We'll find out more about that right after this. Calling CQ, hello CQ. CQ calling CQ, hello CQ. Whiskey 6 Lima Golf. Whiskey 6 Lima Golf. So let's say uh, you are the lead electron leaving my K3 transceiver. And behind, behind the lead electron are millions and millions and millions of electrons. And they enter uh, a tunnel called route 0.66. Route point six, uh, point 0.66 is RG213. And that happens to be about 100 feet long. And then um, those electrons will enter or be on the surface of some wire that makes up the antenna and still not quite hit the speed of light close. But in my case, the wire that I'm using has a coating on it and that coating slows down the electrons that are running on the surface of the wire. <clears throat> to give a better example of velocity factor, uh, this coax, and this coax have a lot in common. They have the same velocity factor. And this is big stuff. This is um, um, 0 0.875, roughly an inch. This is about an eighth of an inch. This is 50 ohms. This is 50 ohms. Um, this has about a 95% shield. This has about a, uh, actually about a 98% shield. Uh, this can handle a few hundred watts. This can handle 8kW. Um, well, we're talking about coax. I, I watched a guy's video where he talks about making dipoles and things. And um, I want to cover some definitions uh, for the parts of coax. And this might be a good piece to use um, as an example. <clears throat> this outer covering is a jacket. So we're, for purposes of our videos, we're going to call this outer piece, which is PVC, um, the jacket. This is the shield. The shield can be a braid, as this one is. It can be foil. It can be wrapped wires. Um, but jacket, shield, and then the insulating material that's between the uh, shield and the center conductor is the dielectric and in this case uh, the dielectric is polyethylene I think yeah polyethylene and then the center conductor which is um, not quite a quarter of an inch in diameter and I'll try to get a close-up picture of it um, is solid copper it's tough stuff by the way they call us <laughs> This coax is called um, up the mic. This coax is called flexible. I couldn't bend this if I had to. Now, in a, in a big roll, I can do a three or four, uh, probably four or five foot radius. Um, in this coax, and again, I'll, I'll um, that's going to be out of focus. I'll do a close up of it. This has a really good shield. Loss on this stuff is good. Um, it's about, I believe it to be about half of RG213. In the next video, I'm going to test that. Um, now, with respect to this particular co co um, coax, which is, R, the designation is RG218, RG218, not RG213. Um, I don't have a piece of it handy of a 213. Um, 213 is 0.4, 0.405. This is 0.875, so this is roughly double the uh, the diameter. Um, sometimes you can get this stuff for free, and I, uh, a good friend of mine, uh, R7KZ Stan, was able to get some rolls of it for me. And in another video, I'll show you how I made coax connectors for it. The coax connectors for this um, run 150 bucks a piece. The coax is about 15 to 20 bucks a foot. 15, I think, is pretty common. Uh, but the coax connectors are outrageously expensive. So I make them, and I'll show you how uh, 
In fact, you can make a lot of coax connectors for different uh, sizes of coax uh, if you want to. In many cases, uh, like with RG213 and RG8X, it just isn't worth it. RG8X. Now, there's a little bit of a difference with RG8X. I uh, was testing some of it with uh, my Nano VNA. Um, the dielectric on RG8X is different. And as a result, its velocity factor is about, uh, and this is a piece of that gray stuff that's everywhere, um, it measured about 0.82 or 0.83. This measured 0.66. What does that mean? Okay, this measured 0.66. This that I can't hold up measured 0.66. There. And this measured 0.66. Um, how's that possible? Dramatically different sizes. They're all the same impedance. What about this coax causes the velocity factor to be the same, even though these are dramatically different pieces of coax? And then RG8X, um, with a foam dielectric, is different. The thing that makes these three pieces of coax the same is the dielectric. And if the dielectric, uh, sorry, if the electrons are running on the surface of the wire, they're bumping up against this insulating material. And if they're running on the inside of the shield, they're bumping up against, I know, engineers are going crazy with that thought. But um, let's just say they're rubbing against the uh, uh, polyethylene that makes up the dielectric. So the 0.66 is not related to the size of the coax, but it's related to this material that makes up the dielectric. And if that dielectric gets uh, moisture on it and it's, it's sucked up by the braid, um, which happened to this, and it starts to, to um, uh, discolor the braid, uh, the losses increase and the impedance can change. Um, it can get kind of wacky. That's technical talk. So anyway, um, the electrons running on the surface and on the inside are slowed by the dielectric. When those electrons got to my wire antenna, which has a black um, PVC uh, insulating material on it, it slowed them down again. Uh, let's estimate that a copper wire strung out in your backyard has a velocity factor of 0.95. What does that mean? It's running at 0.95 the speed of light. This is running at 0.66 the speed of light. So if you wanted to string up some coax and you wanted to know what's happening at the feed point, you could use a multiple of a half wavelength. But if you cut this stuff to that length, it's not going to work out right because you have to take into effect the velocity factor, which is usually expressed as a decimal, um, a decimal point and then uh, uh, two numbers following that. So 0 0.66, 0 0.66, um, the foam dielectric RG8X, 0.82. The loss on the RG8X is substantially greater than um, the RG213 and, and this. So there isn't necessarily a relationship between, there is. Uh, this is not as lossy as it could be because it's got a foam dielectric. But uh, size matters. And with respect to coax like this, um, the larger the diameter, uh, generally speaking, the lower the loss at really high frequencies. This stuff will go up to like a couple of gigahertz. Uh, does that matter at 30, at 30 megahertz? Probably not. And that will be the next video. What, um, what I've done is I ran four links of coax out to the tower in the backyard. There's a switch in the room here that has four vacuum relays attached to it. I can switch actually five. I can switch one of five lengths of coax going to the back. There's another relay, uh, series of relays at the tower 
or I can switch a uh, vertical that's attached to the back fence, the beam and some other things, or I can go to an open. By having an open, I can look at just the coax, one of the five links from point A to point B at using the nano VNA, I can find the impedance, I can find the loss, and I can find the length. And then from that, maybe we can draw a conclusion as to whether or not is it worth having stuff like this. I'll tell you right now, the answer is no. Um, RG8X eh, or uh, RG213 or perhaps LMR400, which are relatively inexpensive. And um, if you buy a name brand and name brand coax connectors uh, can be just as good as anything. All right, velocity factor. What does it mean? It's the slowing down of uh, uh, subatomic particles, electrons, because of the material that they're running on and what they're running up against. So in coax, it has to do with the dielectric uh, because it's running on the inside. Uh, the electrons are running on the inside of the shield and the outside of the center conductor. In the case of wire, uh, it's running on the surface of the wire. If the wire is coated with some kind of uh, covering, uh, it can slow it down a bit. Um, with respect to coax, uh, the correct terminology is jacket, shield, dielectric, center conductor. And if we stick with those, um, it, um, it, it just, and if we stick with those, it makes good sense. At one point I was ordering, I was having coax manufactured, so I'm, I'm pretty familiar with what, uh, what manufacturers want to hear. All right, velocity factor. Uh, so if you wanted to have um, a multiple of a half wavelength to, um, let's say 20 meters, let's just round numbers say, uh, yeah, maybe 33 feet going, uh, a half wavelength is 33 feet. However, it's 0.66. So whatever that works out to, does that work out to 22? Yeah, I think it does. So every 22 feet is another half wavelength. So if you uh, cut the coax at length, that shows you what's happening at that half a wavelength, that half cycle. And if you go multiple, maybe three cycles or four cycles, you can see what's happening at the antenna. And I'll make that, uh, try to make that more clear in the next video. All right, I'm Jim, W6LG, or YouTube Eller for Ham Radio Basics. If you liked or didn't like this uh, video, a thumbs up or a thumbs down, um, please do subscribe, and I'll see you the next time. I'm kind of getting things buttoned up in here and uh, going to be back in the business of, uh, of doing some YouTube videos. 7-3. Bye-bye.